Today I'm going to talk to you guys about my uh, spoon carvers kit. Basically everything you see here is everything I'd need to, uh, to continue the trade or uh, these are like my core tools. So, um, so I wanted to uh, try to go into depth uh, with each of the tools and um, explain a little tips or tricks and um, yeah just some hopefully uh, this will be somewhat helpful to you. So I was thinking I'd start off explaining my axe. Um, the axe is normally uh, one of the more well maybe the middle uh, price range purchase. And so for me, I just kind of developed a hobby of restoring uh, some axes. And so so this one here is just a $6 axe from uh, the antique shop. So as you can see, there isn't much special about it. This is just an old applewood. Uh, well, I had some applewood lying around and I made a handle. So that's just carved. And um, yeah, so the, uh, the bit is the most important thing. Um, one uh, main difference with this axe uh, compared to uh, many others that you'd buy is the uh, type of steel. Now uh, more expensive axes they have a high carbon um, edge in the blade where this one here is very soft so uh, as you can see there's uh, some scuffs and they, uh, they show up quite uh, often. But, um, but the thing with the softer steel is this uh, like it doesn't chip it'll, um, it'll more wear down uh, before you get big chips in the blade. So I haven't even really got any decent sized chips unless I've dropped on the ground. So um, so yeah, so that was uh, interesting and so I'll just share a little bit about the bevel. So I think you can see the bevel there. So what I wanted was it uh, somewhat flat on the uh, on the left side so as I'm hewing uh, anything um, I don't I don't want to have the axe angled in towards my workpiece. I want to have it uh, slightly um, you know I want to be able to make it flat. I want to be able to uh, make a cutting board if I want um, by hewing a board and then um, yeah and so this uh, this edge configuration it's very slight um, and it's taken a long time to uh, to shape the steel I'm just like do a little bit here and there and uh, but really what's more important is that you learn how to use your own axe so so this axe I've grown comfortable with and I can I can use it quite efficiently um, so I'm not saying like the blades not perfect now that I'm looking at it it's it's a it's kind of you know I think you guys get the picture there. Um, yeah, so that's what I was aiming for anyways. I, I kind of got a flat grind here and then a, um, a hollow grind here. And a hollow grind is, um, as you can see a little bit, it's, it's hollow. And uh, so when you're using a stone or any type, anything to sharpen, it'll take off a little bit of, uh, it'll take off a little bit of material around this part of the axe and then it'll take down the uh, the edge. And so um, I think I've heard that it makes it a little bit uh, weaker, but it makes sharpening uh, a lot easier. And um, yeah, so basically I just want to you know show you guys that you can take a, an old camping hatchet, shine it up. I just took a, a, a angle grinder to it and um, yeah, not only prettied it up, but made it useful again. So my next most common tools are the uh, carving knives. So this one right here, this one, the brand is uh, Deepwood Ventures. And so this is a uh, high carbon steel edge. And um, yeah, so it's hand, uh, hand forged and this guy has a little shop and I think he's doing quite well. But, um, but anyways, uh, what I noticed with this is uh, he didn't come with, or didn't come with a bevel like you can see on the, uh, the Mora knife. So it's a very defined bevel there, but this one here, it was just uh, tapered to a point. And he made mention of that um, on his website uh, before I bought it, but I didn't really understand. I just thought, you know, I wanted to spend maybe $45, $50 on a knife and, um, you know, a carving knife. I was using a utility blade before I bought this one. But, uh, but one thing I've noticed with this is that um, the temper may be a little off and uh, the edge chips a lot. So let me see if I can show you. So you can see a little bit the chips on the edge and uh, it really doesn't take a whole lot to do that unfortunately so so I think what that means is that the uh, temper is uh, there's probably a little bit too much hardness and so um, so what I'm finding with my Mora knife uh, I'm not getting this chipping anymore I'm tired of taking this knife to the stone uh, you know way too often so that's why I actually recommend the Mora knife and uh, it does have a high carbon steel edge, but uh, it's laminated and you can actually see the two-tone right there. And so you got a milder steel on the outside and then a high carbon um, steel on the inside. And so what that does is uh, instead of sharpening, when you're sharpening the whole bevel, you kind of got 
uh, half of a milder steel and it's it makes sharpening easier it would also apparently I think uh, they say it's like shock resistant so um, I can't remember what exact uh, model this knife is but um, I've been very happy with it it, uh, it holds an edge very well and then it makes sharpening easier so as a newbie when I bought this knife there was no bevel um, it would, I would have a hard time uh, you know just following a bevel you know this one here I you can just lay that flat on the stone and it doesn't really take much skill so I should have done um, I should have got this knife first um, yeah and uh, I really like it. I really like the point where this knife here doesn't really have a, uh, a point to it. And so with this point, I can get into um, some good tight details. Let me show you quickly. So the details I would use for this point would be um, the inside of the, uh, the spoon bowl here. Um, you know, getting from the bowl to the handle. And uh, so this point just gives you um, the ability to create a nice tight radius and um, and I just found it very useful. So if you are going to start spoon carving I would recommend the Mora. It's cheaper, um, it's got an excellent blade and uh, really unless you just like collecting knives and you got money to burn and you want to buy a you know a real expensive carving knife they're both going to carve you know the same thing it's it's really your skill and so um, I'm personally if this ever breaks I'm just gonna buy another one and uh, I'm happy with it I'm learning how to use it and uh, you know just I made another handle and um, really it's it's not about what kind of you know it's not always about the tools that you have it's uh, about your skill let me explain briefly why I changed the handle um, when I would hold this the the old Mora knife um, the handle would stop it like my pinky and so I found my pinky was sliding off and I'm basically holding the knife with these three fingers so um, so I wanted some leverage uh, you know when I'm using the knife so I just slapped together this uh, very basic handle what I did was uh, I used a drill to uh, drill a center hole and then uh, tilted the drill because the the, um, the end of the stock of the blade is uh, is kind of wide and flat and so that's how I got it in there and uh, yeah so it was very simple and um, it's not to look pretty I don't care I just want it to uh, work well and so my hands have kind of adapted to the knife and uh, I can carve with it and that's what's most important so if you do have a more knife um, yeah I would recommend try and try and make your own handle just see if it works if you're if your carving style works fine you know already then uh, don't worry about it but uh, if you don't have a more knife I actually have a link on my shop uh, to Amazon to buy one of these and um, it actually pays me a little bit it pays me like 80 cents every time you buy one and so it's just a little way to uh, to support me, and it doesn't cost you anything if you're going to buy it anyways. Uh, go to my shop. There's a um, a page called Tools of the Trade, and you can pick up uh, a few carving uh, tools there. So the next tool I bought was the uh, Mora hook knife, and so so this has just been rehandled. This is old and one of my first jobs, and I can't say I'm really proud of it. Um, I don't know why I got that twine there. I think to hide the ugly gap that I left but um, but what I did was rehandle this as well and I just wanted a uh, longer handle for some leverage and so um, so this tool it was helpful um, but I noticed uh, I was using it wrong I think what I was doing was pushing on my thumb and using the tool like this and uh, so when it was nice and sharp I can get a, a nice contour of the bowl and um, you know because it's a pretty tight curve I can get um, a decent, uh, you know, decent shape. Um, but what I found was um, it was a little bit better to uh, to hold, kind of push with the back of your hand here and uh, and, and carve the bowl like like so. And so um, with the shape of the knife, it was, wasn't really working for me. And uh, I think that's just why it's a, a beginner tool. And um, so uh, I mean, yeah, you can go and get one and you can learn how to use it you might uh, feel like you have sore hands or feel like the tool is a little bit hard to use and um, and it is and uh, it's not what uh, most guys are using right now anyway so um, I'm not even going to spend a whole lot of time talking about this one I don't recommend it hugely but uh, yeah so let's move on so this beauty here you've seen a few times in my videos this is the Nick Westerman Tuca Cam Tuka cam is a Welsh word for bent knife, and so so that's all this is. It's just a bent knife. It's not a traditional style, apparently. Uh, it's made using modern techniques by uh, Nick Westerman, and um, 
and yeah, it's been a fantastic tool. So, um, so as you can see, the edge of the blade is so much different. Um, when I was trying to use this tool, the, uh, the Mora knife, the way I used the Tuca cam, um, it just wasn't making a nice bowl. You can see this this contour right here, and that's what uh, really helped me out. Um, unfortunately, it's a little bit expensive, but um, I mean, it's uh, it paid itself off pretty quick uh, making the uh, cuxas and small bowls. I got this Tuca cam forged with a 65 millimeter uh, radius and or diameter i'm not sure but anyways it's one of the larger ones um the only downfall it, it it's great for cooking spoon this is a roughed out uh walnut bowl just just for an example um but uh but what i found with the larger radius is it would leave less tool marks and so that's what i wanted but then i also wanted to uh to make eating spoons in a you know clean sweep so here's one I, I roughed out today. Again, I gotta let it dry and then uh, finish it up. But, um, but what I found was uh, I, with the very few uh, swipes of the tool, I can clean out this whole bowl. And um, you know, just using it like so, I, you kind of push on your fingers, and um, and it's a twist of the wrist. And um, so yeah, it just it worked very well. It, it cleans out a bowl pretty quick. But then you're limited to uh, you know to the size. It's maybe a little bit of an oversized. Um, eating spoon and so um, you know obviously you're, you're limited to uh, to the shape of the bowl with the size of this knife but um, yeah it's kind of like a, a very good multi-purpose tool because then with the cuxas uh, this cleans out a, a cuxa bowl very nice so a few guys have asked me about sharpening this and uh, so I have a quick demonstration um, on uh, one of my cuxa videos of using the um, the strop on this but all I've done is uh, got some dowels and uh, what you can do is just bring your tool to the hardware store, find a dowel that fits nice. This was actually for the Mora hook knife. So for this tool here, I could probably get a larger dowel and it would just make stropping and, uh, and sanding a lot easier. So all I've done is got some wet sandpaper and glued it to my dowels. And um, so obviously you, uh, you go in stages and, um, and then you get to uh, the strop. So I'm not gonna demonstrate with the sandpaper right now, but just with the strop, it's, it's very simple. With sharpening anything, you, you gotta keep your strop or your, um, your stone or whatever is uh, you know, the, the exact angle that you want. And, and unfortunately with this tool, there's not really like a jig you can get um, that uh, you know, keeps a perfect edge. So what I've actually been doing, I've been experimenting with this red compound. I use that first and then the green and it, it seems to give a better edge. So let me demonstrate as best I can with this angle here. So it's just a steady hand and um, a lot of my leather is crap, I gotta replace it, but it's just keeping it, um, keeping your hand uh, as fluent as you can. And um, you know, so you don't kill your edge. So it's, there's not really a, a whole lot of, um, you know, complication to this. It's just a steady hand and that's all it takes. And so after you've kind of stropped or cleaned out, um, finished the inside edge, then I use my, uh, my paddle with the uh, suede on it. So I just learned th this from watching Barn the Spoon Carver. And so it's just, again, just knowing the uh, edge of your blade and just, um, and just yeah, you'll, your hand will develop a, uh, you know, a fluid uh, motion and um, it might feel a little awkward at first, but it works, it keeps your edge. What you'll notice is if you're doing this wrong, uh, your edge won't, um, it won't cut the same, it won't bite into the material as it normally does. And so you just gotta be, uh, it just takes time. It takes time to learn to, uh, to develop a, um, a good hand for uh, sharpening. I, I always say that it's actually, um, it's been tougher to learn how to sharpen my tools than to carve spoons. So, so one more tool that I haven't used a whole lot is this little cull rosing knife. All this is is a knife to, uh, to score your wood and then you can rub a dye or ink into it. And uh, that's how you kind of get a traditional style of, um, of decoration. So yeah, so basically that sums it up guys. If you need some tools, go to my website and check them out. And uh, I have links there. And like I said, if you buy them through there, it supports me a little bit. And stay tuned to the next video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Thanks, guys, and take care.